Howdy ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today. Folks, today it brings me great pleasure to be making this video for you. Um, this is going to be a tutorial on a repair that I did on this Buick LaCrosse. This is my own personal vehicle. And I've been a technician for over 32 years and this is probably one of the hardest vehicles that I ever had to fix. I thought I was gonna to have to call a real mechanic, you know, to take care of this job for me. So it brings me great pleasure in explaining the whole scenario of what was wrong with this car, what it took to fix it, what all avenues I explored to try to um, come to a conclusion with this thing. So stay tuned and let's get started. Okay guys, we're inside the car here and I'm gonna tell you the whole story here. This is probably about six to eight months ago. I um, was out here, I got several different vehicles. I was shuffling vehicles around one day. I cranked this Buick up, moved it probably out of the garage down the hill here. And later that day I went to um, crank it back up. It would not start, okay? So we had to, I didn't have time to fool with it that day. So we ended up pushing it back into the garage and it was several weeks before I even took a look at it. Okay. First thing that I'd done was took a test light, went to the starter, uh, the small terminal on the starter, had someone in the vehicle to try to crank it to see if I had a bad starter. Okay. That's the first most common thing to do. And of course I did not have any power on that small starter wire. So I knew I had something else going on. At that time, I had a generic uh, scan tool and the first code that I actually pulled up on this thing was U2105, okay? I done a little research on that code and found out that that code is a code that it will give you if you need an ECU, okay? So this car needed a computer, okay? Something fried amongst it and it evidently needed one, okay? So I knew then I didn't have time to fool with it. I think Christmas time was coming on. I said, I'll put it off till after Christmas if I gotta buy a computer, this, that, or the other. I knew I'd have to have it reprogrammed or what have you. So ended up in January, I kind of got more serious about getting this thing going. And um, so I ordered a computer and went ahead and ordered one and had my VIN number programmed into it, okay? So I ordered one and that still doesn't fix the problem, okay? So then I'm actually on the internet researching this problem, okay? And trying to find, evidently there's several other people out there that have this problem, but there's no answer on the internet whatsoever. I get on these little blogs to where you ask a technician a question and these people are describing to a T exactly what my car is doing, everything that's had going on. And these people, they say, well, check this and check that. And the end result is always either the blog just ends, there's no answer, there's no continuation, or the technician says, maybe you need to take it to the dealer, okay? So that was always the answer. Never could get an answer. So that's why I wanted to let you guys know what what I went through and how I have come to the answer, okay? And if you'll stay with me here, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyway, car needed a computer, had that code, the U2105 code, okay? Also, another thing that goes along with it is when, um, when that computer goes, the check engine light will not come on anymore, okay? So you, you'll get a no start, and you also get no check engine light whatsoever. And your gauges, uh, your fuel gauge and your temp gauge, I can't remember which two or both of them, they actually just peg out all the way. I think it's all the way full or maybe they just stay all the way empty. I can't remember, it's one of the two. There's something weird with them. I think as they stay all the way uh, on, the, on the low side when the key's in on position, okay? Now, so I get the computer and I hook it up. And like I say, I, I, I'm getting some codes. I actually go and buy myself a $2,000 scan to an Altel. Um, I decide just to own my own. Most shops I work for, they always have the, you know, a really nice scan tool. I decided I just wanted my own scan tool and it was gonna help me fix this car. So um, anyway, 
I went ahead and bought one myself so I could pull all these codes out of all these different modules. And what I kept getting, even with the brand new e ECU um, installed, I kept getting this code as P0318, okay? And what that is, is a rough road sensor code, all right? Vehicle doesn't necessarily have a rough road sensor. It's just for some reason, I don't know how it triggers that. It says something to do maybe with the crank sensor, some of the information that I was reading. And then some people said it was associated with the, um, the EBCM, okay? The uh, ABS module, all right? Now, prior to all this stuff happening, I did have, I knew I had problems with my ABS module because my ABS light was on, my traction light was on, uh, I think my brake light was on, and I drove the car like that, okay, for a while. So I knew I had an issue with the ABS module, all right? So I had these codes that kept popping up, and another one that kept popping up was U1040, which is a lost uh, communication with the EBCM, okay, with the, um, the brake module. So with those two things, I decided, um, now, now here's, here's another thing too. I'm actually getting a little bit off course. When you put in a new, um, ECM on your vehicle, okay, you will have to go through a theft deterrent relearn to marry the, uh, the new ECU to the BCM. Okay. And on this car here, I guess they call this passcode three. You, the cycle is you cut the key on for 10 minutes. You cut it off for five seconds or 10 seconds. You cut it on for 10 minutes. You cut it off for 10 seconds. Cut it on 10 minutes. Cut it off for 10 seconds. And then you try to crank it. Okay. It should crank. And that's how it relearns that that get through that theft deterrent part of it, okay? So I kept getting these theft deterrent codes as well, P1631, P1629, okay? Now I'd done that cycle over and over and over and never could get it to actually clear this thing, okay? And what it would say, bring the camera just right over here where I'm gonna key it up one time. Right here on my little information, display right here it says hood of jar because i got the hood up i want to show you guys where the modules are here in a minute but it says starting disabled okay and it, and and it just right after i put that ecu in there it says starting disabled so you know i kept going through that sequence i've cut the key on for 10 minutes cut it off for 10 seconds cut it on i kept going through that and starting disabled would never ever leave that little display right there okay and the guys on the internet were saying that it was supposed to or nobody ever really had a good clear answer okay as to whether it's supposed to go off or stay on because on some cars that don't have that they actually just have a theft light and the light is supposed to go off after 10 minutes okay but I'm here to tell you right now, I'm gonna tell you how this thing finally ended, but that starting disabled light will never go off, okay? Now, hang on. It'll never go off on that 10 minute cycle. So anyway, just, just hang on a minute. But I, I purchased the ABS module, okay? And finally, cause I knew I had a faulty one. I went ahead and just put one in. I, I, I bought one off the internet, had it shipped here, installed it use my Autel scan tool to go in and clear all the codes, okay, through every module. And this time it finally cleared. Everything was cleared out of there, but it still had starting disabled uh, across the um, display because we still had to do the key relearn, okay? So I went ahead and done the key relearn. I, cr I turned the key on for the first 10 minute cycle, okay? And it still says starting disabled. And I was already getting disappointed. I was thinking to myself, I don't know what else to do. I know this car is going to end up going to the dealership. I cut it off for 10 seconds. I cut it back on for 10 minutes. Still says starting disabled. I cut it off for 10 seconds. I cut it back on for 10 minutes. Still says starting disabled. Cut it off, okay? 
Now, when I cut it off, I noticed something different I'd never seen before. And I can't remember exactly what it says. It says something like theft deterrent is not learned or something to that effect, okay? Theft system not, not programmed or something like that. Because I only got to see that one time. And then I decided to go ahead and crank it, okay? Because you're supposed to crank it after that third time. And when I cranked it, this car started up. And I tell you what, I was so damn happy. I was jumping up and down. I ran in the house and, my, and I was hollering and my kids thought that I'd set the garage on fire, okay? <laughs> I was so happy that this car cranked up, okay? So guys, biggest reason I'm telling you this video here is um, all the stuff that I've read and everything, it was, everything was so calm and so, so many people have this problem with this car, but there was no answer, okay? But my answer to you is you've got to fix every module. If you, you can't just put a computer in if you've got this other module that's causing communication problems, okay? So I had to end up putting two, you know, both modules, the ECU and the ABS module, had to get everything cleared out with, uh, with a professional scan tool, okay? Um, I probably would not have been able to do this with a generic handheld scan tool got everything cleared out of it, and then done the theft relearn, okay? So um, I just wanted to share this bit of information with you guys out there because I know there's a lot of people out there that are dealing with this problem with this 2005 Buick LaCrosse, and I think it probably spans over a couple other year models as well, okay? The ones with the 3.6 liter in it. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Let's take a step outside the car. I'm going to show you where the ECU is located at. I'm going to show you where the ABS module is located at. I'm going to kind of tell you. It's pretty simple to replace. But uh, let's just go out there and we'll take a look at that. Okay, folks. Hey, we're under the hood here of the 2005 Buick LaCrosse with a 3.6 liter in it. The This is your ECU, okay? and it mounts right here you can see this this is the brand new one right here you have these two connectors here that actually uh, these levers flip up and this part pushes this away there's like a little tab it's kind of like you you pull up and you push back this whole plastic piece to pull these off of here be very careful not to break them okay and it's pretty easy once you get those two connectors off you got four bolts that hold this on and and they're 10 millimeter headed and you have one ground strap here that i believe is a seven millimeter wire okay pretty simple to replace um anytime you're replacing a module of any kind on a car de definitely disconnect the battery to where you don't have any voltage spikes or anything while making connections on your on your battery so i disconnected the battery while replacing modules as well now this right here is your abs module okay and it actually locates right over here this is the new one right here and you know the funny thing is guys uh i ordered this off of ebay and it was a looked like a brand new part in a brand new general motors box okay and i had called the buick dealer here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and they didn't have one. They said the only one that he could find was in California, in a dealership in California. And give me the number to the dealership if I wanted to call it and order and have it shipped in my house. But so I felt pretty lucky that I got this one off of eBay. I swear I believe this is a factory GM part, and uh, I just feel very fortunate to have it. I got it for 250 bucks and that other price of the um, other module from the dealer was I think about 800 bucks is what the, the guy said that they would want for it. Anyway, um, this connector has kind of a slide type pin connector as well, this big main connector. There's also another connector I'll show you on this one underneath that powers the pump itself. And as you can see, there's six bolts, okay, six little t20 torx headed bolts that hold this unit on here and you just simply unbolt it and pull it off okay you will have to uh loosen the actual pump these two 13 millimeter 13 millimeter bolts on it nuts on each side and you'll have to lift this whole unit up but you can get it out of there okay it's not that hard to replace neither one of these items is that hard it was just hard for me to figure out what to replace you know and how to go about it 
So guys, uh, hopefully this, vi this uh, video will help any of you folks out there that are experiencing the same problems I did with my 2005 Buick. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Take care.